Good evening, everyone. I'm Nick Van Haddam. I'm the director of Pittington PLT, and it's great to be here to talk about our PLT course, what we are doing now, our plans for 2022, and we hope that we'll get some questions from you and hear what you, so we can tell you what's relevant for you. Um, I'd like to begin by formally acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that I'm sitting on and also our other speakers tonight, Ellen and Matt. We're all on Wajak Noongar country. We acknowledge the traditional owners of this land and offer our respects to elders past and present. I also acknowledge emerging leaders. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the other lands that Pittington sometimes meets on, particularly Wongatha the Wangatha people, uh, the Matu people, Miru and Gadjurong people. And we acknowledge the voices that were silenced and the stories that were never heard. We begin every year with similar acknowledgements and hope that throughout the course of our year, we are very present of where we are and some of the people in the community that we serve. I'm really proud of the Pittington PLT and really grateful for this opportunity to talk about it. But the thing I'm most proud about is our alumni and the, the people that we have in our cohort and the lawyers that they turn into. Um, and so it's really great tonight to have also speaking with us, Ellen and Matt. And I might just ask you both to introduce yourselves. Can we start with you, Ellen? Yeah, hi, my name's Ellen. I graduated from the Piddington PLT last year and was admitted to practice in November. Uh, and now I'm employed as a lawyer at the Women's Legal Service. And Matt? Um, I also um, did PLT at the same time, graduated at the same time as well. And I'm currently working as a judge's associate at the Court of Appeal um, of the Supreme Court of Western Australia. And I completed my PLT while also working at the court. I think that's also a great example of the different ways that people can complete our course. This is something that's evolved over the years. So when we first started back in 2016, it was really designed solely for people who would do placements at CLCs. But since 2016, we've worked out ways that people can do their placements really anywhere. Um, either a volunteer placement at a CLC or various government roles, including associates of courts and some other government department roles, or in paid roles in private firms. One thing we don't permit is unpaid roles in private firms. If the law practice is a for-profit law practice, we require grads to be in paid roles that comply with minimum requirements. Um, but we, that's one of the ways that the course has evolved to create greater flexibility for the grads. Let's talk a little bit about the program itself. Um, and we'll come back to Ellen and Matt to hear about their favourite parts of the program. But it's also the case that it's quite a long program. The program is designed to run from January through to November. We start with a January intensive. I might ask Ellen and Matt in a moment to reflect on the first impressions of what is quite an intense week of study. After that week intensive, we do some coursework and some of that can be done at home. But on the first Friday of every month, we all get back together uh, to work through some more workshops, more coursework, some lectures. And then in the Friday afternoon, we have CPD sessions with practicing lawyers. And that's an opportunity to meet some broader, um, some members of the broader profession, but also senior practitioners, uh, senior barristers and judges. Um, before I get ahead of myself, maybe we'll come to you, Ellen and Matt. Can you cast your mind back to that first January intensive? Um, Ellen, can you, can you remember walking in for the first time? Um, yeah, I can. I was pretty nervous, I think, from recollection. I was quite, I just didn't really know what to expect. Um, obviously, coming out of uni, you're a bit overwhelmed with the whole process of PLT and getting admitted and taking those first steps into your career. Um, but it was a really friendly group that we had and my understanding is it, that's been pretty consistent throughout all the cohorts um, and everyone was really lovely and everyone was really approachable. So it was really intense, like a lot to take in, but I really enjoyed it. How about you, Matt? Yeah, I sort of the same experience. I wasn't really sure what I was expecting and I think we were also quite fortunate to have been able to, um, as I think people, hopefully people coming into the course will also be able to experience, we got to meet in person, which didn't last for all that long given uh, worldwide circumstances. Um, and yeah, it was great to be able to um, start the program that way. Hopefully 
be the same way um, going forward into the future. Yeah, and it, it makes a huge difference. I think it's also one of the reasons um, I really like the way we do it because um, I think it's, it is, Zoom is just hard. It's hard staring at a screen. It's exhausting. But to me, the biggest thing is the breaks. It's you have the lecture, you have the workshop, and then you have a cup of tea with someone um, and you chat about it. Did you, did you find that, Ellen? Yeah, definitely. That was, you know, the time that I met everyone and Piddington says, you know, they're about collegiality and it's definitely true. I've made friends, you know, Matt included through the cohort that I still maintain friendships with and get lunch with in the city sometimes and call on when I have legal questions. So it's definitely a really good like opportunity to do that. You too, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. And such a um, wide range of people as well. I think too that um, people who I sort of friends with from uni all kind of went in and did fairly similar things. And uh, you know, for example, I hadn't I hadn't actually met anyone who'd been worked worked at women's legal. hadn't I don't think I'd met anyone who had experience at legal aid um, or at or the ALS. Um, so really, to uh, yeah, broaden the range of people that I worked with and to um, to, to learn from such a such a wide range of people. That was a great great aspect of it as well. Things I was just completely un, un, unaware of. Um, yeah. Did either of you really understand what PLT was before you signed up and got involved? Um, no, not really. I mean, if I'm being honest, like I still yep. don't really get it. Like I do because I've been through it, but it's, it's, it's so many different things and it's hard to explain or categorize, you know, it's obviously an educational experience, but it's also about life experience and, you know, working your way into the profession. Um, so it's so many different things, but a great, great mm. year for sure. I mean, I think inherently it doesn't make obvious sense. You sort of have to go through it to understand it because people could legitimately say, mate, I've just done a bunch of law school. Why, what else is there? What, what was your thinking, Matt? Uh, yeah, sort of the same thing. I mean, you know, people had explained the idea of articles to me and articles seem to make sense. You go into and you gain your practical experience within a particular um, organization so perhaps my thinking was uh, slightly oriented in the sense of all well, it is going to be all about experience um, within a particular place at the same time I think an advantage of doing PLT through somewhere like Piddington is that um, kind of goes back to the point I made earlier, you know, you don't have parochial thinking because you're actually, you don't just, you know, you work at, um, you do, you would do your articles previously at a commercial law firm. You would just be learning about how to think in terms of commercial law. You wouldn't be, you perhaps wouldn't be learning about family law or um, administrative law or um, criminal law. And I'm personally the view that I think all law is law. And I also think that learning law by looking at it through a sort of generalist mindset to covering all these different fields is really helpful because you might pick up when you're dealing with criminal law, um, even though you're you know, squarely focusing on criminal law, there's aspects of ethics as well when you're dealing with that that you pick up and apply. I, I do like with, with PLT, particularly Piddington, um, how diverse the range of subject matters it covers is. I think that is an advantage that it has over articles. Um, and I went into PLT expecting certainly a, because of Piddington was you know, I expected there to be a social justice aspect and it certainly met that category um, perfectly and yeah it was, it was, it was pretty great. So I might have deviated slightly. No, no. Question, hey, but... look, it's pretty great. Let's let's be honest. And uh, you guys have touched on a lot of the design. So um, I went through that process in 2009 and I'm embarrassed, like, whoa, that's a long time ago. <laughs> um, and back then there was articles training program. And so that was at one part of that where you were actually off campus. You're out of your law firm for between three and five weeks and you're hanging out with people from different law schools in completely different offices. And it was great. Um, now, uh, so I just, we've got some questions coming through, which is awesome. So anyone that's tuned in, please do send your questions through. Um, I'll come back to the design, but the question was, we just wanted to ask 
about the written work aspect, specific, specifically the time commitment and content. Um, and now this is something where we are continually reviewing our materials and our exercises and trying to make them as relevant as possible. So there has been a bit of a shift even since Ellen and Matt went through. There's a lot more focus now on working through some of the written assignments together so that we can spend, like, rather than spending the time together pure lecturing it's more about worked examples and working together but it's still worth noting it is a massive time commitment all plt is all plt is 450 hours of programmed training and our intention is to space that out over quite a long time so you start in january and you're admitted in november so the coursework finishes in september people can extend that to october in some circumstances we try to spread that 450 hours over the whole essentially over the whole year. It does sort of replicate the traditional articles of clerkship, which was a 12-month commitment. Um, there are other PLT courses that um, expedite it and condense it. Um, and our view is that it's actually better to take your time. It's part of what Matt was talking about with the diversity of experience and the exposure to these different things. Um, this is setting you up for decades of work. Uh, and I can say having just finished my first decade in the profession, I haven't stopped learning um, and um, I don't think I will. I think um, it, everyone's shaking their heads in furious agreement. So let's slow down a bit. You've, you've powered through law school in a lot of cases. People have been really fixated on, I've got to finish, got to get admitted. But for a number of reasons, my firm recommendation is actually 10 months is a pretty good period between finishing law school and getting admitted. One of the important reasons for that is there's a number of paid roles that you become ineligible for once you're admitted. So one is working for a barrister. It's against the barrister rules for a barrister to employ a practitioner who's got a practicing certificate. Once you're admitted, you become a legal practitioner. While you're a grad, it's possible to do paid work for barristers. And similarly, a number of firms and government agencies have um, ordinary recruitment processes, which require uh, and are designed for people who are not yet admitted. So it's certainly the case that you can become eligible for some roles once you've got your ticket. Reflect on where you're at in your skill level. When you're competing for roles against other certified practitioners, do you want to be doing that four months out of law school or would you like to be doing that 10 months out of law school when you've had a bit of time to reflect on your practice, get a bit better um, and be a more skilled and attractive candidate? So, Diane, I've said a lot of words. I don't know if I've actually directly answered your question. There's a mixture of assessments. Some of it is about... Um, Advocacy exercises, we're going to come to the criminal law intensive in July, which is always a bit of a highlight. <laughs> and Diane's come back and said, I hear you, I'd prefer the slow, deep approach, thanks. So thanks, Diane, you sound like our sort of grad um, and we'd love to talk to you more. But yes, it's very much about that. There is some written work, there are some um, individual assessments, there's some group assessments as well. One of the forms of written assessment is um, based in the placements. So, um, and I might come to Ellen to talk about that because Ellen remains one of our standout um, reflective journal authors. Matt was great too, but I think um, Ellen got more of a kick out of it than Matt did, I think it's fair to say. So, Ellen, can you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how many journals are required now, but when I did it, it was about 16 to 18 and they were um, spread across um, the different practice areas but not the practice areas they were more like the skill areas so you like lawyering skills ethics those kind of things um, that are all not practice areas of law but really really relevant to your practice uh, and you had to write journal entries and reflect on what you'd learned um, I was really lucky I got to do mine with the assistance of my mentor which they say you can do it with your team and colleagues or your mentor I was you know going to grab that opportunity to learn from my mentor and did it with her and it was such a great opportunity to sit there and say okay I'm getting so much work as a paralegal I'm you know juggling so many balls in the air I'm learning so much but what am I actually learning in terms of practical applicable skills so that was a really good reflective process and I really really enjoyed that. Anything to add on that one Matt? Um, I don't think so, but I think it just it was a important part of the course to not 
just learn content that you're going to repeat, but to develop more as a person and the reflective journals are a way of sitting down, thinking about not just what I'm learning, but why I'm learning it. And um, yeah, I, mean, I don't want to sound too cliche, but I definitely made me think um, more deeply about every aspect of the things that are covered about legal ethics. Um, yeah. Can I ask whether either of you had the experience um, of sort of at the end of the year, looking back on what you didn't know in January or February and sort of being amazed at how far you'd come? Um, Is this a long time? Maybe not. Is that to both of us? Um, yeah, well, either of you. Because uh, oh. I certainly have had that experience where I, I sort of look back on some work I did years ago and just sort of think, oh, you idiot. Um, oh. I did, uh, th that it, there is a, a real value to having a, um, a structured way of looking at development. So did you did either of you notice things that became so easy in October that you just had no idea about in February? Yeah, definitely. I think just um, the way you approach questions and the way you approach problems is kind of the biggest skill I learned through PLT. And it's, as I said, it's applicable across all different legal disciplines and practice areas. And that for me was, you know, I look at some of the stuff I probably handed in in January, February, and then some of the stuff I handed in towards October, I was definitely getting better feedback in October, <laughs> completely yeah. fair enough. So yeah, for sure. Um, one, we can give a bit of a head start to all those who are tuned in and watching. The biggest lesson that I want to enforce, particularly in the January intensive, is you are not in law school anymore. And that comes from feedback from our grads, but also our supervisors. They really want people to understand this is not about writing um, 2,500 words and showing us how clever you are. Here's a problem. What's the answer? Um, don't tell me how clever you are. Tell me what the answer is. Matt, I hear you agreeing with that. Is that something you've had to come, you know, had to had to face up to? Yeah, absolutely. And um, even when when you start out, um, even I think I had this experience in maybe in a smaller um, or in a more refined respect when I started paralegaling at a law firm, and you start giving these sort of answers to questions and putting them in long mem memos and bearing away the answer somewhere in there and, you know, getting the feedback. We just want to know yes or no. Like, we don't need to have all of the history of this legal principle dating back to the courts of chancery. We just want to know, is this yes or no? Like, yeah. we need an answer. Um, yeah, you know, we're so. doing law practically to help people. It's not, like university. it's not like uni where you get the time to sit and develop a comprehensive response that maybe goes beyond the scope of what you've been asked to do. Um, yeah, absolutely. Let's talk a bit more about these modules then. So we've talked a bit about placements. You go out to your placement, you do 80 days, you're learning skills. The journal is a way really of reflecting back on what you're learning and being trained on on the job when you're in those placements. So that's a big part of the course. We've talked about the January intensive and the first Friday sessions. In those sessions, we talk about some core skills, but we also work through um, the core modules. So civil litigation, trusts and accounting, ethics. Um, these are some of the core skills we do. Then in every PLT course, there are also some electives. In the Piddington course, we don't offer different electives. Everyone does the same ones. So they are admin law and criminal law. We've decided on those because uh, uh, we came really from the com community sector and to support the community sector. And those seem to be some of the most useful and diverse. Um, I also think it makes sense that's, that approach, the Pinkton approach, makes so much sense because if you are being asked to pick electives in PLT, you, you do get the feeling like you're missing out on something. And also it means that the course is devoted, you know, 100% on this is the course that we are going to offer to everyone. Um, I just think there's a lot to be said for it rather than an elective that only a subset of the cohort takes. Um, seems to me just be a better approach in general. That's what I thought. I was pretty happy that I didn't have to pick between five electives and I picked, you know, two or you know, two five and miss out on three. I hope I haven't dropped out. 
No, you're there. Nick, you're on no, mute. That, that was my bad. There was a bit of background noise, so I thought I'll do the polite thing and mute myself. Ah. And then, of course, um, the settings are such that you can't unmute yourself. So thank you, Conrad. And we should acknowledge Conrad, the Executive Officer of the Pittington Society, who is the who makes a lot of things happen and unmutes people when they're muted. So you know, thank you for giving me a voice again, Conrad, and for all you do for Pittington. Um, but <laughs> thanks. Um, and thanks, Matt, also for, for holding the fort there when I was um, <laughs> silent. But yes, that's right. So be, by um, removing that, essentially just forcing people into those particular electives, we can integrate things a bit more so that some of the ethics stuff actually comes through in the criminal intensive, um, which we wouldn't be able to do if we separated it out. Having said that, um, we recognise that there are other core areas that people need to learn about. And Ellen, a lot of your work is in relation to family law. And we see that that's an area where some skill development and training is of a lot of assistance to a lot of practitioners, including junior ones. Um, so Pittington Society also runs CPD for practitioners and we encourage grads in the cohort to go along to those sessions as well. We're certainly increasing our focus on family law options, um, we're working with some really great senior people in that jurisdiction. So even though the, the um, formal graduate PLT electives are predetermined, there's still opportunities to upskill in other areas. And then another way to do that is with the PLT, with the Pittington Justice Projects. So every graduate also is engaged in um, a bit of a project to apply their skills and demonstrate their core skills by looking at different challenges, particularly in the placements. Um, I don't know, Ellen or Matt, if either of you can tell us about the, the, some of the project work you did in your placements. Yeah. I think yours um, might be more interesting than mine, Ellen. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what you did. Um, I'll talk about mine. I um, set up an outreach clinic at Women's Health and Family Services. It was an opportunity that was offered to me like two weeks into my placement. Um, and I worked closely with another lawyer and we set up an outreach clinic there now, which runs fortnightly. I go once a month, um, every second fortnight. And we do five appointments in a row. These are um, clients that have been identified as having a multitude of legal issues. Um, and they're already attending women's health and family services for different things, including counselling or domestic violence assistance. Um, and then the social workers who we've given a bit of training to have uh, now got the ability to identify legal problems using a legal health check and they book them in and we get to see them, which is really, really cool. And it's how I've gained some of my ongoing clients. Um, and setting that up was like, honestly, probably one of the like proudest things of my like that I've done for myself it's um, something that I'm really happy that continues and hopefully after I leave women's legal service it will continue as well so that's really really cool I would have loved to have um, undertaken such a similar project when I started um, unfortunately my project was uh, interrupted by, by COVID and I was very lucky that Pittington were happy to facilitate a late change once my project became un unviable I mean we were, at, we were in lockdown in our houses. There was just no hope of getting this off the ground. So they were, um, Pittington were great in reassuring me that um, I think it's a good example of how um, flexible the project is working around, working around you. And um, that managed to change. I ended up, uh, my project was to help um, with the publication of content on a website, which distills down some um, uh, key evidence, evidence law, um, decisions in Western Australia, just to try and make it a bit more accessible. Because I've always been quite, um, well, I've always really liked the opinions on high blog by the University of Melbourne, um, and even some articles in the conversation as well, which is just intended to make law a bit more accessible to non-practitioners. Um, and I think it helps public confidence in the um, administration of justice just to have access to those kind of resources. Um, you don't, of course, you try to find line which was one of the challenges. You can't cross into legal advice and you know, purporting to tell people that you don't need a lawyer, you can rely on this. So yeah, there's challenges there that had to be managed. Um, plainly, we're not, it's not a substitute for um, seeking legal advice, but that was my project, yes. Nothing wrong with that, Matt. <laughs> Pretty solid and great to pivot, as you say. But it's worth reflecting that essentially this PLT course had its start as 
as a justice project. It was um, lawyers saying there's a bit of an issue here at the time in 2016 or in 2015 when we were getting started, this oversupply of grads, too many grads, not enough roles and an underfunded and unsupported community sector. Let's put it all together. So um, that was the first justice project, but now year on year, there are new justice projects and both, both of these examples continue to have impact. Um, so we're super proud of it. Um, but we think this is really a, a, an interesting and important part of it. It's people focused design. It's get the specialists in, get the experts in, get practicing lawyers in to teach the next generation of lawyers, lawyers what they need to know right now in WA in 2021 to be a good lawyer. Um, so that's the history. That's where we've come from. What can we expect in 2022? A bit more refinement around that, um, the continually updating course materials to reflect the changes that are happening both in law, but also just in factual scenarios. Um, we will be updating our corporate and commercial practice materials in relation to some of the challenges from COVID, um, in relation to the director's duties from that arise particularly in the not-for-profit sector. These are things that um, are becoming more and more important and a lot of junior lawyers increasingly need to understand because we're delighted that so many of our alumni are the sort of people that are now finding themselves on the boards of not-for-profits applying these skills um, in these useful ways to support the community. So now I'll try to talk a bit less. Let's turn back to Matt and Ellen. Um, maybe I can just ask probably my favourite question. Uh, well, I'll come to my favourite, which was your most memorable experience. But let me put you on the spot first. What was the best thing you learnt? We've talked a bit about some of the general skills and the approach that you've changed. I wonder if you can sort of sum that up in a way. Flip, thinking on the things you learnt, what was the most important thing you learnt or the best? Ellen, can I ask you to start? Um I think it's really hard to grade, you know, the most important thing you've learned. But I think something that's been really important and prevalent throughout my practice so far, noting it's only been about five months, is learning where to go for help. And I don't mean in terms of like online resources or things like that. I had a matter come up and I was really confused and lost and I called Nick and then I called, you know, like he connected me with someone else and it's, you know, I have other connections within the legal profession. So it was learning that not only where to go, but that it's okay to ask for help and be like, I actually don't know. I'm incredibly junior. This is really complicated. Um, and just learning that it's okay to, you know, give someone a call and be like, I'm going to run this by you, obviously within the bounds of confidentiality and those kind of parameters. But yeah, I think that was the thing that I've taken into my practice and used the most. Matt. I think it might have been sort of team, um, working well in teams because it was just, I mean, you might expect that these are the kind of skills you might develop at uni through a group assignments and that sort of thing. I know group assignments have a, a bad name at uni, but I found the group assignments at Pittington actually worked really well. And it's, it's just, a, it's a bit of a different context to university where you're given the law and you kind of expected to come to a right answer, like a, a complete right answer. Some of the tasks at Pittington, they were a bit more not focused on getting a right answer, but getting, you know, an acceptable answer within time frame. And so I just think that when I worked in teams, we all had our own strengths and weaknesses and just um, learning to, um, to liaise and, you know, for example, the difference with uni is you know, we don't, being to society, there wasn't necessarily a strict deadline. Um, so if we had things came up, um, you could arrange for an extension if there was something, you know, reason, a reason for it. University, plainly, that's that's very challenging. Um, you have to apply for special consideration, et cetera. Um, but yeah, just there were quite a few group projects. I mean, an example of a group project is where we were just thrown into a team and asked um, to, um, uh, at least in the context of a, a criminal intensive um, to um, prepare submissions like, you know, bail applications and um, things that's never done, never done before. And fortunately, there was someone on our team who previously had worked at the district court and was really referring to her, Amara. She had a lot of experience. That was the best team on our team. <laughs> 
seen experienced practitioners do this and the rest of us, at least myself, who have not. And so really had to find other ways to support, to, um, to help out. Um, and yeah, that was so similar to practice where you go into a workplace and in my context, you're asked to, um, to do something at the court and you've never done it before. Uh, you've got to go and find someone who's done it before. You know, that's, so that was probably what I got, most got out of it. I think. Huge. That's awesome. Mm. Um, all right. Well, let's come to my favourite question. What was your most memorable experience? What was a moment that you will remember for, the, for, for a while at least? Helen. Um, oh, I get to go first. Cool. Because we talked about this previously and Matt and I had the same one, so I'm going to steal it. Uh, it was the criminal law intensive and that's the one where Matt's referring to, you know, us doing a bail application. We also ran a fake like little trial, criminal trial. Um, that was amazing experience for me, um, especially because now I'm working at the Women's Legal Service. I've had to go and do advocacy in three different courts um, and I am not the best public speaker. I do get a little bit nervous. Um, so having those skills and that opportunity to do that and get feedback from barristers um, who have such amazing and, you know, such a breadth of experience was invaluable for me, for sure. And sorry, Matt, she stole your thunder, but what about you? No, I actually stopped because I mentioned the criminal law intensive earlier. So uh, I, very I, I, got my, I exacted my revenge. Um, it would have probably would have been that, but I also had a particularly memorable um, particularly memorable talk by um, Matt Howard SC um, on, legal, on, on legal ethics. And he was reflecting on his time. And I don't, I don't want to um, misrepresent what he says, so I'll just sort of speak in general terms. But he's giving his experiences as a junior practitioner and in particular mistakes that he had made as a junior practitioner, and some of which I think um, he would be happy for me to tell you were pretty big mistakes. Like these were some very, very, fairly significant mistakes. And it gave me confidence to see that somebody who had made mistakes um, but had to his credit, you know, owned up to them, confessed to them and dealt with them appropriately, was able to progress to now, you know, his still appearing before you know, the Court of Appeal in, in the High Court. Um, and he was just extremely candid with his thinking process. And um, I think what I got out, what I particularly remember from that is that it's not really making mistakes. Everyone's going to make mistakes. It's inevitable, particularly in law when you're dealing with things that are just so complex. So it's just inevitable. Judges make mistakes. That's why you have appeal courts. And these are some of the smartest people. Um, so you're going to make mistakes. Um, the real issue is how you respond to them. And in almost all, you know, in nearly all circumstances, trying to hide a mistake or to you know, pretend it never happened or to try and make it into a small thing, make everyone forget about it, is just going to make it worse. It is throwing fuel on the fire um, and it, so it will eventually, you know, in, in, at some point in your career, you might get away with it once, but if you get into a habit of doing it, it will blow up in your face. And I think that's what I got out of that talk. Also, I'll say just yeah, because yeah. you, um, you know, kind of said the criminal law intensive and I kind of stole it again, I can say something else. Um, yeah. We did have um, Carmel Barbagallo who ran the uh, Claremont, I'd say serial killer, but he's not a serial killer, he's a spree killer because he only got done for two. Um, but before that judgment had actually come out and that decision, she came and talked us through, again, within the bounds of confidentiality, um, how they put together that case. And that was amazingly interesting just to see from her perspective like how that was put together so you know if you're into the juicy cases and want to know a bit about those like high profile criminal stuff there's definitely the opportunity to learn from some pretty awesome people and we also had the opportunity to hear from um mr yovichess as well who was um, representing um the then accused now convicted um, yeah and a claremont serial killer um and uh not just particularly in the case of Mr. Well, in the case of both of them, really. Um, while it was interesting to hear about the the case, I mean, you can read you could read about the case in the media. What you didn't get to read about in the media was their personal experiences, and both of them shared their own personal experiences within the bounds of confidentiality um, of personal you know personal struggles that they had had in the case, um, and. That I thought was, yeah, it was an insight that um, few people would have been privileged to um, be exposed to. 
Definitely. I'm so, so glad you've discussed that and, and of course those different perspectives and the ability behind closed doors to have honest conversations about the struggle that we will all face in our practices. And um, I think one thing I want to emphasize is the word collegiality, which is a word that um, is something that Pinkton is very focused on. And it means slightly different things for different people, but at its essence, I think it, it is those discussions that you've both just reflected on. And indeed, some of the other highlights that you've reflected on, Matt Howard's reflections um, and, and so many other experiences we have throughout the year, and indeed helping each other through the year. Um, this is not just the next step. This is the start of, you know, generally speaking, the, the rest of your life. Um, and in order to succeed as a practitioner, you need good people around you. You need to know that you can turn to them and speak with them. And it helps if you get a bit of guidance as to how you can go about it. Um, that is at its heart what Pittington PLT is about and it's what Pittington Society is about. Um, and we're delighted to have Ellen and Matt here. Uh, and, and I think Ellen and Matt have both also contributed to teaching some other sessions. Um, Matt's also our, our Moodle man, our um, Moodle administrator, which we're very grateful for. Mm -hmm. And so there's all these different ways that diverse skills and experience can continue to be part of this supportive environment. And um, thank you both so much for the, the great year, but also for your continued contributions. Um, I think that's about it. I'm gonna do a wrap up, um, but Con's come back online. I don't know if we want to throw to Ellen and Matt for any final thoughts. Yeah, go on. Let's do that. Any final thoughts, Ellen? Um, just one thing that did pop into my head when you were speaking earlier about the time commitment. Um, I would just say I was a bit nervous about that as well, obviously, because um, I was in at the Women's Legal Service for my placement. It wasn't paid. So I was doing three days a week there. I was also trying to hold down a job uh, in hospitality. And I was really nervous about that. Um, but I will say, if you can manage law school, if you've done like, you know, placements throughout law school, if you've had a job throughout law school, whether in law or anything, whether you've done volunteer work or whether you've had like any kind of social life and you've been able to manage that, then you can manage the time. It's different in terms of the speed at which you have to turn things over, but that's really practical experience and it's definitely worth it. So I wouldn't get too freaked out about how many hours and how much time do I have to put to it? Because if you can manage the last six or seven years, which you have, then you can do it for sure. I think my okay. concluding thoughts would just be that PLT has for, um, I think, legitimate reasons had a bad name to it as, as something that you just, you just do it, you do it, you forget about it. Um, you just have to get through it. Um, and I think that for me, when I was evaluating the options, I thought, oh, well, I don't, I don't want it to be that. You know, I, I, I think I see that as entirely pointless and I don't want to, to do that. And so I just suggest anyone who, are, who is evaluating their options, you know, speak to people who have done you know, Pittington PLT and speak to people who have done other options and consider if you would like to do an, a program that you don't just forget about. Oh, well, that's a very humbling... Oh. No, it's finished. Yeah. No, thanks, Matt. That's very lovely to hear. Um, that is it from us tonight. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Keep an eye on Pennington social media, um, firstly, because the memes are great. Thanks, Con, for that. Uh, Facebook and Instagram, but that's also where we give the latest updates. We'll suit you, later in the year, we'll be calling for applications to join our next cohort, um, but you'll soon also see the updated 2022 course guide and application form. Um, and you can also sign up for our mailing list uh, and get our newsletters. And you're very welcome to come to our events right now. Um, they're open to everyone, not just for lawyers. And a lot of them are really interesting. And you can start that process of learning how lawyers talk, how they think, um, what it means to hang out with them. And if you've never done that before, we promise the Pittington events are friendly and someone will show you where you need to go and how it all works. With those final words, thanks very much for your attention. Thanks again, Ellen and Matt. Thanks, Con, Thank on the one and twos. Um, good night, everyone. Bye. Thank you.